Hello everyone, this is Angela here. And today I want to talk about the Chris Watts case. <laughs> I guess I'll give my two cents uh, with regard to this case. I don't know. For some reason, it popped up on my feed and I looked at the case and it really started to look, really became quite fascinated with it like everyone else did. And the question in my mind has always been with regard to Shanann was, were there red flags that regarding Chris Watts that she overlooked? And I would have to say that there were red flags, but these red flags were so hard to spot that most people wouldn't think anything of it, right? Um, and I'm not talking about psychopathy, but just a red flag that would kind of make you not, kind of make you think twice about getting into a serious relationship with this guy. And I just want to give you my personal opinion, okay? This is a personal opinion. Um... One of the things, and I'm going to speak about both of them, okay? Both of these two people. For me, personally, if I was a guy and I was dating Shanann, because from what I gather, Shanann was married before. And there's not a lot of information out there with regard to her first husband, except that her first husband was an attorney. That's the only thing I know. And I don't know why they broke up. But I will say one of the things that I would have found a serious problem with Shanann Watts was the fact that Shanann appeared to be a person that was a very hard worker, I give her credit, and God only, you know, God, sorry, I'm struggling to find the right words. This poor woman did not deserve what happened to her, and my God, those poor children, too, did not deserve that, okay? I'm just saying, talking about Shanann's flaws, okay, and we all have flaws. But the one major, major problem with Shanann Watts was she did not know how to manage money. God bless the lady. She worked hard. Okay, God rest her soul. But this lady appeared to not know how to manage money. She was extremely high maintenance. Now, that doesn't excuse Chris Watts for what he did. He's a a cold, vicious, cold-hearted, vicious murderer. And he deserves everything he got. But getting into a relationship, I have to say this. That I read somewhere that finances were the number one reason why couples broke up ahead of cheating. That's what I read. And you could look that up on the internet for yourself. But that was the number one reason why marriages broke up. Couples cause cause of debt. Now they already had enormous debt to where they had to declare bankruptcy in 2015. Um and you would think that they would uh consult a professional about money management, but I don't know if they did. Nothing was ever said about that. But they were in the hole again at, by the time the murders happened. Um, that's not an excuse to murder somebody, okay? That's not an excuse. But getting back to the, the very beginning and dating and stuff. She did have a beautiful home in North Carolina that she owned. and. Based on the way that home looked, 
it appeared as though Shanann liked the finer things in life. And, um, you know, that's pretty big shoes for any man to fill. I mean, you have to be quite well off to live up to that expectation with her. She also seemed to have an A-type personality, meaning that she wanted things done. She was a go-getter. Her mother even said that, that she was a go-getter. Like when she had her mind made up to do something, it was done, which she could have been quite quite good at sales. She seemed to be very do, doing good, you know, with her uh, internet sales, with that MLM. Uh, but a lot of people had negative things to say about MLM and that, you know, a lot of the profits that she made from MLN, she put right back into the business. And that contributed towards the drowning in debt. That's what I saw, okay? But let's go back to the beginning and with Chris Watts and the red flag. So that was the red flag with Shanann. Like, if I were a guy... And let this be a cautionary tale to any guy who's watching this video. If you see that a woman is high maintenance and to the point where it's super high, I mean, you better think twice about whether or not you want to get seriously involved with this woman. Because if you uh, spend more than you make, you're going to be engaging in a lot of fighting with your partner, with your, with your, you know, significant other. So that's a serious issue. Good credit is a serious issue. All these things are a serious issue before you get into relationship because, you know, um, not managing money well is pretty bad. Okay, so now I'm kind of like beating a dead horse. You get the point. Chris Watts, okay, Chris Watts, the thing that was kind of, I wouldn't say a red flag per se, but would be an issue for me if I was dating somebody like Chris Watts, two significant things, number one is the fact that his family did not like me, family is important. Okay, and when your your future mother in law does not like you, that's going to cause problems in your marriage. You know, to me, I'm seeing. I would be thinking, you know, this is going to cause a problem later on because he's going to have to be the mediator between his mom and me, and the fact that both of his mother and his sister did not like me. Um, would be an issue, and then, and then, but Shanann's issue to that was just Shanann, sorry, Shanann's solution to that problem just pick up and move far away. Well, you're asking a lot of your husband to just get away from his family. And Chris Watts was the type of guy that I would call a yes man. Okay, he did not know how to assert his feelings. He did not know how to express himself. He just went along with everything Shanann said. And he was a covert psychopath. Meaning that everything was stuffed inside. To where one day, when it finally did come out. There you go. Does it make it right? No. Um, could it have been prevented? I don't know. I'm not a mental health professional. Okay. I'm not, I definitely believe that there was a communication problem between the two. And Shanann started to pick up on it because I noticed in one, one of the text messages where Shanann said, I wish that he would grow some, grow a pair and speak up, stand up to his mother. And he didn't. He just was like, 
I don't want to deal with it. Because that's the way he handles situations. And Shanann was okay with that. At least that's what I was seeing. If I'm wrong, please say something in the comments about it. But then there was another red flag. And being a person uh, that, that's experienced this, and you all that are narcissistic abuse survivors, um, the passive-aggressive behavior of Chris Watts' mother and it was there, mother and sister, and it was there before they got married. Okay, like they had some type of rehearsal dinner or bridal, something before the wedding. And Jamie was involved. And no doubt, Jamie, who's Chris's sister, I think that's her name, Jamie. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. Um, she, the friend, none of Shanann's friends came. Because Jamie did not mail out the invitations. Passive aggressive behavior. And this started a big fight. And it leaves you wondering, okay, why somebody would do that? Like, why don't you like me? And Shanann was the type of person that, as I said, as I just said, she likes she likes things to get done. I mean, Chris, I believe at one time called her bossy. And I think I'm not sure if that is the right word to describe. Because I didn't know her. But from what I'm seeing, my research of the case, I definitely would describe her as a person that has an A atypical type personality where it's got to be her way you know and he just went went along with it I definitely see that I'm not saying that I'm right okay I'm just saying that's what I'm seeing if I'm wrong and you guys know something that I don't know you know please please correct me in the comments Another thing that was passive aggressive was the fact that the 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 what they called the nutgate thing where Cindy Watts had ice cream that the that little CC was allergic to and Shanann freaked out and Shanann and and um Cindy was like, well, that ice cream was meant for Jamie's little girl, not for Cece. But in my opinion, I, I think that was passive-aggressive behavior because she knew that Jamie's little girl was going to want ice cream, okay? And that Cece seeing the other kid would want ice cream, she's going to want it too. And being that Jamie's little girl is a child and doesn't understand that this is the the baby can't have that ice cream because of an allergy, okay? Um, there's a potential danger for harm. And Cindy could just pass it off was like, well, that's not meant for her. I didn't do anything like that. But here's the thing. Cindy set that up to become a problem. Okay. The appropriate thing to do is to simply not have ice cream in the house with both kids over and to explain to Jamie's little girl. If Jamie's little girl was that much into ice cream, what Cindy Watts should have done was say, you know, we're not going to have ice cream in the house because little Cece can't have that. But after Shanann and the other children go home, Grandma will take you out and get you ice cream. Or hide that ice cream way back in the freezer 
that nobody knows about it. And then when Shanann goes home and Jamie's little girl's there, say, I don't want you, I didn't want to serve this in front of the baby, you know, because she can't have it, but here's your ice cream. Or if she did want to have the ice cream in the freezer, okay, and when Jamie's little girl went to go get it, say, no, 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 this is not ice cream time. We're not having ice cream now because Cece can't have that. So ice cream is off limits because she shouldn't, the child, even though, you know, we want the child to have ice cream, there's an appropriate time and an inappropriate time to serve that ice cream. Passive, passive aggressive behavior and I've been through it myself with my son you know my son set up a situation okay and this is what I'm going to talk about passive aggressive behavior okay and this is was this is what led me to go no contact this was one of the elements my grandson I picked up my grandson every Saturday uh morning to take him roller skating I, it was a 45 minute drive one way to pick him up from his mother's house to go roller skating my son you know it was not uncommon for my son to work on a saturday okay my son told me i said i'm going to pick up my little grandson i told my son on saturday i'm going to pick him up saturday my son did not say not to pick him up he just said i don't have him this weekend that's it and he was not clear in his in his communication and i did not ask him because i just assumed that he had to go to work and you know he did not say mom you can't pick him up this weekend or if you do you got to drop him back off at his mom's house so i just assumed that he didn't have him because he was working because it was pretty much the norm you know that you know here he had a wedding to go to. So to make a long story short, I went to go pick him up at his mom at um his baby mama's house, and she thought that he was working too, because he didn't say to her, you know, um, I'm tell my mom to that he's got to bring him back home because I got to work. He didn't say anything, so she thought that he was working too. So it was like the afternoon and I texted him. I'm like, oh, what time do you want me to bring him home? No answer. What time? Like, and so I texted his girlfriend at the time. And I'm like, text. I was like, hey, like, what time should I bring, bring the boy to, you know, like, what time do you get off work? They freaked out. I'm like, oh, and all this fighting started. I was like, hey, wait a minute, you know. Not clear in your communication. Okay, setting up a situation to cause a fight. And that's pretty much passive aggressive behavior. Okay. And it's the same thing that happened with the Watts. And in my opinion, that's part of narcissistic personality disorder. And you could see that narcissistic trait in the Watts family. I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not diagnosing anybody. I'm just saying, because I can't diagnose, obviously I'm not a mental health person, but what I'm saying is that's passive aggressive behavior, okay? And, you know, it comports with narcissistic personality disorder. It's part, of, it's part of narcissism. So that's my personal opinion on the matter. Um, Chris Watts, uh is where he is he he killed his entire family and um he made that decision and he's paying the price for that and that's his problem um the fact that he says that he found god and all this stuff um no no you found he found what he believes is god what he tells himself is the right way, but he's not living in reality, okay? The reality is what's around him, and that's because he's forced to live in, in his environment. But um, that's all going to uh, have its 
run its course until, you know, his life ends, whenever that may be. Um, you know, I don't wish for somebody to die or anything. I don't, I don't hold no hate towards, I hate what he did. Okay. But I hold no hatred towards others. You know, that's, God is his judge, not me. I, 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 I condemn what he did. Okay. And, um, for that, he deserves where he's at and that's it. So I am going to wrap up this video. And that's my thought on passive aggressiveness of narcissism and my thought on this on this case. And um, any thoughts or opinions, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.